All right, people of the internet, my name is Uduri Jagero and this is Dialogues with Jagero. And today we are going to be talking about bricks. Sounds like bricks. Mm-hmm. Sounds like bricks, right? The far, yes. the yes. block. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I am not I am not very uh, politically educated like the two people that we are going to have this discussion with. Um, I've always known America to be a very powerful nation. And sometimes people are wondering, where does it get its power? You know, mm. uh, how, why is it that America controls SWIFT? It controls uh, the dollar. It can print the dollar. It can do a lot of things. Although oh, my my guests are going to be differing with some things that other heads of states have said, like, <laughs> you know. But anyway, I have the man with the knowledge, uh, Mundi Chuka. I have the man with the knowledge, uh, Uduru Duku. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Um, there is something that I read in the in the on the on the New York Times that is very interesting. It's about about BRICS. It's about the United States, the power struggle, the multipolar world that is there. Russia is there, China is there, Argentina is there, India is there, and then we have the new in, and and uh, you know people have come entrance, in, yeah. yeah, entrance into the into the into the conversation, you know. So he says that for more than a decade, the United States mostly ignored BRICS. The grouping formed by Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, you know, and the rest that have now joined the bandwagon. Mm. And um, the, the the writer is saying that uh, the writer is called uh, uh, the writer is called his name is very very difficult. <laughs> I can't even pronounce it. <laughs> he's, he's an American. He, he's, <laughs> he's not, <laughs> but you don't even know what an American is these days. <laughs> so they say that it rarely registered on on Washington's radar. When it did, the impulse was shown by Jake Sullivan, the national security, recently stressing that it is some kind of geopolitical rival was to downplay the group's significance. Okay? Uh, so, but now it says that it would be a mistake, though, to, miss, to dismiss its importance. After all, any club with such a long waiting list, in this case nearly 20 nations, is probably doing something right. BRICS expansion is an unmistakable marker of many countries' dissatisfaction, dissatisfaction with the global order and the ambition to improve their place within it. For America, whose grip on global dominance is weakening, it's amount to a sadly significant challenge and opportunity. So he says that the BRICS, the people, the critics of BRICS have a point, but they can't dismiss it anymore. Mm. So perhaps to start this conversation, <laughs> 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 so <laughs> <per, laughs> what is what is BRICS, Odur, Oduku? Uh, I think when we go back to mm. when it started, yeah. actually the term BRICS itself was. I think formed, you, can, you can push this uh, a little bit closer to you. Was was formed in America. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I think it was by one economist for Neil. Yeah. 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 Mm. So it was under the auspices of uh, of analyzing uh, these uh, new countries that were fast growing and had these large populations. And at this time, there were, we had China, uh, we had uh, <coughs> we had India, we had South Africa and Kenya in 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 Africa, and then we had uh, Russia, mm. then we had Brazil, mm. and so. Just the same way they started analyzing the MENA region, the Middle East and North African region, they came up with that, a term to try to make sense of the economic developments that were happening in these countries. So it took a good number of years uh, before then in 2009 when it was brick at first, before yes. South Africa awesome. came to the fore. Mm. And so they formed brick. And then they realize, like, of course, there's the next they front. They need the face. Yeah, <laughs> the face, like, we are not as global yeah, as we think yes, we are. Yes, yes, yes. So the face would be like, we need an African country here. So mm. the, were they, were they, it was, was it continental at first? Like choosing from one continent? No, not, it, one, not it was merely, but that's one of the factors. Yeah. growing countries yes. that are also, like, typically the most popular. Mm. Mm. And so after they are done with China and, and India, uh, which holds, like, almost... <laughs> That, that's almost a quarter of the quarter world's of the population. population yes. And then you had Russia, which I think came into the fore geopolitically. Mm. Uh, so, and then you had Brazil, which is also a huge country and has been rapidly growing mm. following the Chinese model. And so it was natural 
for because Russia for them to get to the South uh, American uh, region, they had to go through to Brazil, Brazil yes. Mm. And then Russia is a country, it is a neighbor. And uh, India is a neighbor and also fastest growing, also most populous. Mm. So they had brick. And then we need to have an African face <laughs> to this outfit. And then look at what is the biggest economy in Africa. So it's like, okay, let's go with South Africa. So they didn't go with like Egypt, the most yeah. popular mm. country in Africa. They went with the, the one with the biggest economy. And that's how BRIC came into being. Mm. So from then now, I think we'll, we'll go through how it has transformed, how it has evolved mm. over the years, over the past 15 years. Yeah. It's interesting that it's not as new as people think it is. No, it is not. But what makes it what 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 is the what 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 has what has you know what has muddied the waters that now people are like something is happening? Well, well, most likely, I think you you, you have to look back in terms of the disintegration of the polarity of, of, mm. of the world, mm. because for a long time, if you go to the village, you ask somebody for let's say an artist. In the village, they would most likely point somebody from America. But have you ever seen this meme of uh, somebody asking you to name a Chinese rapper, gun to your head? Mm. Yeah, for a long time that was actually the comfort zone, and that can actually, if you extrapolate that to the to the larger idea of of, of, of geopolitics, you look at how people were comfortable because the world was Americana. It just that's just the way it was, but. There was a before we were talking off camera. We were talking about the the gruntling, the the gruntling dog. There was a wounded dog somewhere, and this wounded dog, it's not like they were they were just chilling somewhere, drinking juice and then licking their balls. No, they were forming allies and they were strategizing and they were moving very fast in terms of STEM, in terms of science and technology, in terms of military uh, indices. Yeah. So these things were moving in in uh, in, in not so much a subtle way. In, in fact. It's only that for a long time, when you have such a powerful uh, geopolitical force, it tends to drown every other narrative. That's how powerful America has been. You've said from, from your excerpt that you're reading that for it's almost almost four decades, as constantly America has been leading on the forefront. So from many people, experts will say that it is not entirely a new thing. In fact, even the way it came up, it was a paper by O'Neill, yeah? yeah? Yeah. Yeah, it was a paper. Yeah. But it was an economist or something. Yeah, it was, it was an economist. Uh, at, at, I think uh, Sachis, Sachis, I think Sach, Sachis is one of the farms in, the, in New York that listed in NSEs. So this guy was also just interested to know because these were people who were curious to know what is really happening. You've been here. We were talking about how you are here, but you do not know what's happening outside. But there are people who do see that. So for a long time, people were actually, there are a small number of people who are really conscious of what's going on in the undercurrent. And people like O'Neill were interested. So now, what is the deal here? What is the new model that, that they're proposing? Odura said that for a long time, we only had a brick. And even then, the name brick was not even as, as outspoken as such. But they needed a face. That's why you're telling you this thing is more of a strategy than, than a reality per se. But it's very strategic and it cannot be dismissed. Just like uh, the excerpt was saying, dismissing it is uh, entirely a bad thing. But <laughs> but I think it's not as 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 uh, as already uh, as advanced as we would imagine the American mm. uh, geopolitical world is. There is a. I was reading something else by an Al Jazeera reporter. I forget his name, and he was he was giving he was trying to separate the kind of power that America has. Mm. I don't know what Uduru Duku, I don't know what you'll say to this. They are to he talked about what BRICS lack or BRICS and the and the other parties mm. lack yes. is the ally. The ally in it. Mm. Because now he was saying that if if right now there is war between China and America, then the UK would would be allies and will send troops to whatever is happening. Canada probably might send troops, but it was saying that if but, but South Africa is not going to is not going to to join China no. in fighting. <laughs> no, no, no. So so maybe what do you want to add about that? What is what is the ally thing? What makes it you know uh, this is ally because what the what the journalist was saying that was sort of pouring cold water. Uh, yeah. You know, mm. saying that that that's really, and then he was also saying that uh, 
even though uh, South Africa can decide to trade but maybe i'm going ahead of myself mm-hmm. i want uh, <laughs> i want to, i want to talk about the ally the ally factor in it and see how different that is i think uh for us to understand uh maybe the the idea of allies mm-hmm. i think we have to go way back to 1944 yes you have to go back when the britain institutions were being formed oh, yeah. after the world war 2 so mm-hmm. the world war typically devastated the world uh, europe was destroyed uh europe which world war is basically just like tribal conflicts mm. between <laughs> because europe's uh, europe is probably one of the few places in the world where you have single single you need, you need to get identity as a country yes so germans are germans uh the, the french are french you don't have any other ethnicities mm-hmm. within those countries but this was not it is not something that just happened they fought for thousands of years mm-hmm. to have those small single ethnic sort of countries and so when the world war which i always put it in quotes, in quotes because it is not because <laughs> it was it was basically intertribal warfare in europe uh, so when <laughs> when that happened and it devastated it devastated the, the, that subcontinent uh and so at the end of it when the nazi germans had been subdued and hitler <laughs> decided to take it <laughs> with his own hand. <laughs> so what happened is that america was the big force that had helped europe uh to defeat uh nazi germany and then ussr on the other side of of of, of the, the the geographical region had also helped to push the nazi influence mm-hmm. out of uh, out of the baltic states and so america now become a natural leader uh, of the new world and so to put structure mm-hmm. to a new world one of the first uh, questions that had to be grappled with was how do we rebuild how europe how do we rebuild and so to rebuild europe uh, america wanted to do it its own way through the new deal but then they they also wanted a way in which they could bring countries together to build uh, then so how do countries access loans to rebuild themselves after being ravaged by war as where well now uh, the IMF came and the then IPRD. the World Bank came and then there was like how then do we prevent another war and then the UN the came UN. now within the UN uh naturally people are not the same <laughs> yeah, yeah. if somebody is giving you money uh, they naturally assume yes. a higher yes, value, yes. especially if they've also beaten you to pulp yes they have countless the times might to yes. conquer you and yes. they have the money and then they were fighting away from home so america beyond pearl harbor mm. america was untouched there was no war in america so it continued through that isolation period and then into the war and built itself into a superpower so we have those institutions and then now we become members would you say that would you say that these institutions were were basically created by america yeah it was it yes they were created by america of course with the allies which were now the 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 allies mm. during yes. the world war 2 mm. but they were basically following in the footsteps like america saying this is the dark and i'll shine a torch and you yeah. guys will follow uh, it was in a it was in a space where the treaties were being negotiated just for oh, face yeah. value yes but, but under current but in reality yeah. it was like this is what we have to do this is what you have to sign or we will let nazi germany right <laughs> and beat you yeah dangle the carrot yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so that's where now the allies idea comes from mm. from that initial foundation of britain woods institutions and the un very little has changed since then in the in the, the, the structure of cooperation between those countries mm. and in who they call allies there have been a few mm. sort of jumping up and down coming back going out coming back but that's where the allies are so if you see 1944 uh, to now we have over 50 years of very structured a uh, very close very intimate relationship both on the cultural level but on the political level but on the economic level and military level between america 
in these the countries. Mm. So when you see China on the other side, China, the BRICS, uh, it's being formed, uh, it was formed, but as an afterthought. Mm. It has More reactionary. As a reaction, yeah, reactionary. As a reaction to some other force to the to US US hegemony, right? Mm. You have this huge superpower that has these strong allies, including in a structured military framework like NATO. Mm. And so uh when China realized, you know, China is still America's biggest trading partner. Yes. When it realized that America can lock you out of the financial system mm. like they did to Russia. To Russia. And then <laughs> strategically China had to then how do I create another vehicle An that in. can be able to satisfy my own economic demands if America decides to lock its market. Mm. Ochoka, why do you think America would want would, would why would why would China be 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 fearful of America if that is their biggest trading partner? Why would why would they be fearful of it? You know, it's very interesting that one of the reasons why uh, uh, the U.S. owes China is it almost eight fifty billion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Treasury, yeah, bills, treasury. Yeah. Do you know how that happened? Mm-mm. Because it got to a point where uh, uh, they were selling the, 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 the what they call the treasury bonds, and China bought quite a number of them. So in a way, if you if you let's go back a little bit in terms of allyship because they're closely tied. Oduko said that this war was mostly fought outside of America until maybe later on. That's when you see wars happening within America, but it was more of a, an attack coming from outside. But when we see these wars happening in, in outside of the structure of, of the U.S., we are looking in terms of how did this allyship happen. And then we also have to question our diplomatic configuration. When you have a country that has nearly uh, a consulate or a diplomacy office in nearly every other country in the world, and then you have China that has recently realized, hey, our language is not even known. So they have Confu- Confucius Institutes in yeah, major so parts of have one in Nairobi, in Nairobi here yeah. now. Yeah. University of Nairobi, yeah. KU, uh, in Zambia, University of Zambia. So this, the, the, you realize that for a long time, they thought that if we were to actually de- de-dollarize the economy, the international economy, then we would catch up with the American economy. But that's not actually how it should happen, because there are other structures and variables are involved within the within the system. And like Odur mentioned, one is military; it's not just alone. The other is economic, the other is diplomatic, and the other is also social cultural. If you look at in terms of language, in, look in terms of uh, movies, series, movie what? series, yes, yes. Music. Yes. The music, also education, yeah, education, like yeah. like the the these the American system, these scholarships that happened, the, the, the full bright, the full aspiration to yes. go to America, yes, to Harvard, have degree, yes. to Harvard, to yes, Yale. yeah, to MIT, yes. So Most, maybe I think, uh, yeah, maybe just to structure it, yes. Yeah. Uh, now that it's becoming a little bit clearer, I think maybe we could structure it and look at what is the cultural aspect. We used to call it, uh, Mac. Donaldism, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the cultural imperialism. How, and and this is something that even uh, China is battling with, with mm, having a McDonald's. Mm. How America exports its culture to the world, mm. the soft power, aspect soft power aspect of it. And then we can talk about that and how that soft power, that culture, has infiltrated almost every other country. Uh, including the Arab states mm. that that mm. had the Sharia laws and everything, they also they are passing materialistic yes. interests, which is basically the American dogma. And then maybe after that, we can talk about the economic aspect, uh, the trade balances between China and, 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 and the U.S. And, and what other trade partners. And then maybe after that, we can talk about is there a possibility for a more close political. Uh, message or integration mm. within BRICS itself, because that's one of the huge, huge challenges. Problems. Yeah, the lack of cohesiveness. We're already seeing it. The fact, uh, I'm already yeah. ahead of <laughs> <laughs> the, the lack of cohesiveness. Yes, in, in those structures, and then maybe at the far end, mm. we can look at what does it mean for Africa. Yeah, mm. what yeah. does all these? Are we in the driving seat? Mm. Are we at the back seat? 
A vive en el viejo. A vive en el viejo. That's an interesting point. A vive en el road. A vive en el road. South Africa is in the viejo. But that's South Africa. Africa. Yes. Yeah. It's South Africa, Africa. Yes. That's, that's what you're saying. Because yes. mm -hmm. if you look at such a country with the economy, because mm. this, this if at first is an economic cooperation. Mm. Now, who controls the economy of South, of South Africa? Africa? Yeah. Are the are Africans even at the frontier? South Africa, yeah. Are they even there? Of gaining. Mm. This cooperation. What I know is that transport is not in the hands of Africans in South Africa. <laughs> Manufacturing is not in their hands. Then what else is? Exactly. <laughs> so the, so the Farming is not in their hands. So we can, I mean, we can South start Africa. With the culture aspect. Yeah. Especially for we are huge consumers mm. of American culture. Mm. Yeah. Even so let's how do we then, then let's start with the first the first the first yeah, yeah. the cultural imperialism uh, aspect. Yeah. So culture comes in different forms. Mm. Uh, we tend to uh when we talk we talk of the art aspects the books the films uh the music but the other aspect of culture is the political system, institutions and systems institutions mm. democracy mm. The which is actually the driver. They, they, that's, that's the, yeah. Yeah. the American democracy. Yeah, the American yeah. democracy. It's yes. not just any other that's democracy. Which, which, is not, which is not really democracy. No, but no, it's not just no, any other it's democracy. It's American democracy. Very it's important an American to democracy. put them together. Yeah. Which is really simple. Mm. But if you guys can hold regular elections and elect people within your communities, mm. irrespective of whether you are actually electing them or not. or not, then you have representatives at these national institutions of governance and then you are practicing democracy. Mm. Mm. And so, according to the American doctrine, democracy is supposed to lead to a more stable society, a more productive society, a more happy society. And then, at the end of the day, everybody is rich, everybody can access education and healthcare. But then, there's a glitch. Mm, it's a glitch in, in the, the matrix, system. yeah. Mm. yeah <laughs> what I wanted to ask Ochuka, mm. And and Rick uh, Duku Duku has talked about this in terms of the, the 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 you know the what they are exporting in terms of education in terms of the movies and all these things mm. is it is it an intentional thing or it happens for example who is the owner of McDonald's how can it we, how can we, it just happen le, le, no 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 okay. Okay. <laughs> that's what I want you to answer all right <laughs> American Amer America is not the, is is a company yeah. I mean the McDonald's is a company America but is so yes so. yes but you all you find it everywhere so when when you are exporting this american culture throughout the world do you think is it is it intentional that the american wants this to do or or it just it just happens that mcdonald somebody wants that franchise in nairobi is is it for at, the, at the at the at the government level that this is what we want to do <laughs> you see that reminds me of what really happened recently about the g2g Yes. People, people only see Kayao is just uh, just quiet. You don't know if if there is a crocodile under. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is now what is called geopolitics. Or to yeah. look at the other face value, you think there is a country, you think there is a Kenya, you think there is a South Africa, but no. Actually, people people who actually look at it in terms of how commit commit commit, do we look at the American democracy? Yeah. Uh, some scholars say that there is simply a, a, a committee that sits down. You don't see the face, you don't see the hands, but something is happening. Something is working. This committee is what is contractual with the face of the world. It's like an, a, an interface with the world. So when you see franchises blooming all over, of course, we know one of the greatest export for America is capitalism, number one. And then we look at the structure of capitalism. We, we, they say there's a supply and demand. So supply and demand is, is kind of like the hand of God. When you already move to the hand of God and then you say, uh, America is uh, is the, 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 the one nation under God. You see the way it's, it's building up pole pole. So you have these franchises that are blooming up all together, but they're not just happening. They're very strategic and they're very deliberate and they're very infused deeply. Have you seen hemp infused ropes? Yeah. They're very deeply infused with the ethics and the philosophy of capitalism and Americana. And of democracy. Mm. Yes. Uh, for example, just, just uh, there's, uh, when, when you look at democracy, it comes with liberalization yes. of the economy. Yes, trade, yeah. Yeah, it comes with liberalism. So what is happening here is that there's a structure for how you should manage your economy, 
that is coming with a structure of how you should govern yourselves. And so liberalization of the economy basically means that you leave the forces of the market to the market. Mm. It's like to tend to efficient itself. market yeah. hypothesis. The market is God. The market mm. will decide how much something costs. Uh, so if customers or consumers want a specific thing, they'll evaluate what is in the market and then buy from the seller that they think can give them like uh, the quality and then price uh, according to their own their own pockets. So it's, it's a simple message. Uh, capitalism is a simple message that you can work so hard if you have capital, uh, build a business, create really good products, and then create products that people want to use, and then people will come and buy right. those products. On, and then it capitalism exploits our own selfishness, mm. our normal human behavior mm. Mm. Yeah, of making a profit out of something, of gaining gain. materially uh, from, from something. So it's, it's extremely natural. It's extremely natural that if I have a, something that I need to sell at a specific price, I should put the price in the market and then the person who can afford we'll will buy. It. And now that's now where the biggest difference <laughs> between mm. now the America and the Russia and the Chinese start to play out in terms of what is the market system mm. that you want for your country. So America exports democracy together with the market system. Mm. So when McDonald's comes here, it comes because we are a liberalized economy. Because we are able to receive you can it. come here, start a company, a subsidiary for, uh, for McDonald's, uh, come with American dollars, mm. Because your competition. It, it kind of reminds me of, uh, I'm very sure this has happened to a lot of people. There's usually, when, when somebody has preached, and at the end of it, at the very end of it, they ask you, so if there is anybody here who has not received Jesus Christ, usually. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not just trying yeah, to bring that yeah, analogy. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. the preaching has yeah. created a conducive environment for, for capitalism and democracy and all these value systems to thrive here. Yeah. So it is coming because our, our, our economy is liberalized. It, the reason why it couldn't, it couldn't, it can't happen, it couldn't happen as far as, as far as we would have wanted in maybe countries that are so close in, in the Middle East is because that environment was not conducive in itself. In fact, that is one of the fighting that happened in the, in the Iraqi oil war and all that because it was not conducive. But if you look at it in terms of countries that have, have taken the bait and the hook of capitalism and, democ and American democracy, you realize that they were softened softened so much they created this idea that for you for your system to because also we did as the for, for after colonialism we didn't have a, a proper structure we didn't have proper institutions and the ones that we had after colonialism were actually pro west so that already is a system it's like a template so you come and populate it with ideas with with, with data with the market with the model because it is supposed to serve their greater good goes back to what what Duku was saying capitalism pro west or it is designed to be West. It's you know, you know. There's a. I, I, I think. I think. Uh, at at some point, look, look at where you're the standing. Evolution from. Yes, of uh, countries. Yes, we tend to forget who influences what. Mm. Yeah, we tend to forget where do things start, uh, because I I know sometimes we say pro East, pro West, mm. but with something that I keep on asking myself: Are we West by design? Or we are pro West mm. because when you say pro West, it means you are a completely different system. structure. Yes, and yes. then you are aligning yourself to the other to what is in while still existing with your own. But the thing is, mm. when colonialism happened here, they erased, they completely erased whatever systems mm. that are existing here, and because colonialism was took a long duration, mm. they had all the time to build a new system from scratch. Mm. So the school system is built from scratch. The religious system, Christianity, mm. is mm. built from scratch, mm. right? The cultural system, the clubs, it's built from scratch. That's why the illegal... Uh, Even the China legal illegal, system, yes. But clubs are <laughs> not, not illegal, <laughs> you know? So, th so there was a, a complete imposition 
of a, a new system on us and then we were trained through the education system mm. yeah because when you go through this education system you get this kind of a white collar job the outcome and is. then you'll earn this kind of money and then this money allow you to participate in the economy to buy goods and services and then it's this cycle mm. so It, it the, looks to, like a choice. To buy the iPhone. Yeah, it looks like a choice. <laughs> exactly. Or buy the iPhone. And that's, those are now like American aspirations. Aspirational values. That we yeah. carry here. Like the iPhone is more superior. Mm. It's, But in respective <laughs> of, <laughs> of, of whatever. Whatever. Uh, let's not go uh, to, let's not go to that. Let's not go to that. It might cause problems. Yeah. <laughs> But that's, that's the wholesome system that we had. So the only thing that prevented us from being wholly immersed is just because we are human beings. We have agency, we can hear, we can we can see what works for us and what seems not to be working for us. But even if even if we are forming new alliances, we are forming new alliances based on what, yeah. With the design, mm. we are not changing the design. And now the reason why we were built this way is so that we can trade with them. Mm. Mm. This was supposed to be a source of raw materials. It was supposed to be a market for finished products for them. It was supposed to be a place where you come and sell your educational ideologies, a place where you send your teachers, you send your doctors, you send your nurses. The whole the entire health system is the is west is a west system including how we structure our insurance programs health insurance pro- the entire superstructure is a western superstructure it's very interesting that you can never find insurance working differently anywhere exactly no? because it, no? it the entire system is imported and so we are left to juggle at the political level the other day Uruduku I was asking this this insurance guy that it is so difficult to understand why i cannot just opt my own brother's son into my into my policy mm. like it is just paying for him look look at it in the top of this is what the, this is what we saying the yeah. idea of extended of a family, family yes is is it's not in america <laughs> not <laughs> yes. in fact you see right. mm. they, they they are not cousins in africa somebody is either your brother or your sister or unless they're very distant Yeah. But now your 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 brother's son mm. they don't look at them as this is your this is your son. They look at them as somebody who needs to go through an affidavit. Some proof, some proof so that they can qualify them for for you to include them as a beneficiary. And I I also needed to make a point in terms of in terms of how the qualifications that make this substructure. I think it was very important when we say pro and we are the west. In fact, We are just simply the West. We only have the <laughs> residues. Well, those two, those two residuo, like when you you you're drinking from the pot, and then the water is now. Yeah, we only have residues of out of our own personal human agency, but we are simply the West. We are just the copy paste of it, and that's why when they come, it is easier for them to 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 to, to elbow us. Because we are basically speaking the yes, same language. Yes, the same language. We the education system we went through, the books we read. The language uh, we speak, the language we write in, because there's there's, there's always a, I will come to it later on, but there's always what can you access in terms of the world's knowledge system. Mm. Mm. As a Kenyan myself, as a person who was taught in the English language, the the knowledge system that exists out there in the world that I can access is written in English. Right? All the books I'm reading in my house almost like over 99% of the books of mm. are in English. Now these books might argue against this superstar. They might criticize. They might talk back to the empire. Mm. Mm. Right? Mm. Yes. But they are still using the superstructure of language of the empire. They they are not they are talking back to the empire not to not to resist not to revolt not to rebel against the empire but just to convince you that is a wrong thing but mm. you can work pole pole mm. and then try to sort it out and so that's where the initial problem comes mm. Be- because even the, that chinese i don't know she's she's in the foreign affairs ministry she was, she had a very passionate interview with somebody from al jazeera and all of it was in english 
And look at that. Yeah. <laughs> this is Al Jazeera. Yeah, this, this is the voice this is of Al the Middle East. of the Middle East. But then Al Jazeera uh, they realize that for us to talk to the West, we have to we have to adopt their language. They have to hear what <laughs> yeah, are what you're talking saying. about. <laughs> yes. But yes. then to do that, then you have to adopt the spa structure of their language. Even the media which is policies less confrontational of yes. debate. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like if we can't agree I'm going to pick a gun and we're coming to fight. And what is it's a debate? What, so if what exactly agree, is a debate? Exactly. So de- American uh, democracy. Uh, yeah, a debate is American <laughs> democracy. Like <laughs> let's let's see, let's talk about it. We can agree to disagree yes. yeah. and we can go back home. Mm. But when you go back home and look at what is in your house, then that's what the market is. Where is it produced? Mm. What is in your house? Whether it's your computer, whether it's your TV, whether it's your your, your everything, whether it's your clothes, yeah. where is it produced? There are so many things that they are even selling us that are completely nonsensical, like the Apple TV. Mm. It yeah. does exactly what what an Android TV does. Mm. Then they sell you the this other one called this this the the the, the Android stick, mm. the Google whatever. It does exactly <laughs> the, the same Amazon. thing. Yes, the Amazon the Kindles, stick, yeah. yeah. Amazon stick. Yeah. <laughs> they they are just useless products that that you don't need in your life. But, but you see, it has an aspiration look at tied it, to it. Look at it in terms of this it's 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 housed in a certain way mm. that for you to access these movies this kind of entertainment this kind of cultural products you can access it through this pathway mm. Now the pathway it can be amazon it can be google it can be facebook it can be whatever but this is the pathway mm. right? and and also you asked a, a while ago in terms of what what is actually the what necessitated breaks and we have to look in terms of how uh, the dispensation of of what qualifies something to be dominant because all these things are just it's just a dominant game mm. they're playing a dominant game so breaks is responding to something what is this something exactly yes what what qualifies them because for a long time we had the breton woods institutions as we were said the world bank was simply meant to restructure from scratch from the from the debris and, and the rubble that had happened after the world war but to do that you have to have a, a financial superstructure you have to have well, you must have the money you have to have the money <laughs> simply simply you must have the money you have to have the yeah. money and i think these people must have really thought was it really when last year people were talking about this was a long con game this is a long con strategy because it extended beyond the immediacy of 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 of, of, of uh, the Marshall plan of finance your finance mm. cuz yeah. we were going to number 2 yeah. right and this year now we are getting yeah. into the economic aspect of it yes now. yes mm. and if you the, the, the loans we are we are going to give you loans so that you can rebuild your country that was the first part that was for europe mm. for former colonial uh countries because now Europe was devastated by war it doesn't have mm. money to maintain economies mm. so they're having pretend independence uh, we are giving you independence mm. because we no mm. longer want to control mm. you guys we want you guys to be free mm. and, yes, and, now and civilized. enjoy yes. we are now civilized this is the liberty but the are the reality is that independence was purely because they didn't have money mm. to control to run the companies this, this, simply this, yeah this 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 <laughs> these companies that were controlling our countries because the money had been expended in war mm. it was all gone they and they had lost 20 million people in war there is nobody else to send to the colonies mm. yeah to manage slave plantations to have a whole colonial structure managing the entire countries because it was extremely mm. ambitious yeah, ambitious yeah <laughs> it was extremely ambitious and chartered I've, I've never, I've yeah. never understood how the how, how the <laughs> british colonized india is the thing is the thing is the thing anthropology wala yeah, is the is the thing you have to you are you have to make them fear <laughs> by the punishments you give the lord yeah the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom yes. <laughs> you have to fear so uh the economic aspect so we are going to give you these loans to develop yourselves we are former colonies but we are human mm. We can give you access to loans 
And then you can use these loans to develop your countries. You can build your infrastructure. And if you want to know what kind of infrastructure to build, come up and benchmark mm. in our cities. Mm, you come to See how our, how our transport system looks like. Come to Lancaster for constitutional yeah, benchmarking. Yeah, come, 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 come. And, and so we were going there. We went even there to make our constitutions there. Mm-hmm. They are feeding us everything. It's <laughs> nice. You're enjoying yourselves. Uh, in the you are fighting for is it, mm. is it, is it like what do they usually call Africans for in the West? Is it, yeah, 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 they, they like put a in big, a bus. A big, yeah. a big, <laughs> <laughs> it's still happening today. Yeah, it's it's still happening today. So we are like, then we go there and we have a blueprint. No, we Nairobi should be like London. And then we come and make Nairobi a small London mm. because it is flat. Mm. And this is how the houses should look like. This is how the streets should look like. You remember the, the the days of the flowers along the the Bogan mm. place and mm. along the yeah. and all so that. Just a, it's not only it was just like <laughs> a replica a small, of it. Yeah. And then the whites who are there, like, okay, now you guys can live in Eastlands. Let, let us let us live in mm. Lovington mm. here in Kilelesha. Control. Yeah, so that we have left that big other place for you guys can live mm. there and manage your economy. And so that that went on for a long time until. We started realizing that no, these loans are a tool for neocolonialism. Mm, the strings attached. There are strings <laughs> attached. You are given a loan with certain instructions that this is how you have to restructure your politics. This is how you have to restructure your governance. This is how you have to restructure your electoral Elections, systems. Yeah. This is how you have to restructure your market. This is how your central bank should manage the currency and anything that relates to currency, whether it's monetary policies or fiscal, fiscal policies, yeah. all that. Mm. So yes, we had the independence. Yes, we seemed to be managing our economies, but for whose benefit? To pay back the loans. But now the interest to the loans, you cannot pay it. Yeah. Absurd. Over it the roof. Absurd <laughs> Over the roof. We, we, we didn't have any option but to sign. Mm. So the, the interests were absurd. Until it reached a point where now we feel like, no. There's a long con game here with this debt thing. As when now when we were forming, when, when African states were coming to the OAU and they were, wanted to form the OAU, mm. that was the that, yes. that was like the biggest discussion. Yeah. That's where the, the Sankara's mm. speech on debt came from. Because they realized, but then, yes, you realize that, but what is the structure of your economy? Mm. In other words, called ground vitu ni gani. Yeah, kwa ground. Mm. The same, same thing. Now, countries countries are just like individuals. I have one thing, you have another thing. I want what you want. You want what I want. How can I get what you want, what you have, and you get what I have? We have to change. We have to exchange it. Mm. Now, how do you exchange it? I buy it from you. You buy it from me, right? Mm. At the basis, at the basic that's level, it's, it's as simple as yeah, that. Yeah. Mm. But now the problem comes when you are not producing. Mm. So I produce things for you. I give you loan, and then you buy the things from me. So I gain double. I preserve my capital by giving you a loan, which generates profits. This loan, I either generated it from grabbing your stuff or charging you prices that you know you can't Absolutely. pay. But then you have no option. You need those goods and services. And then also if you look at it in terms of what we were exporting vis-a-vis what they were bringing to Africa. First of all, they, there's been a huge, huge, huge noise in terms of resource, resource cars. How, oh, Congo this, Congo is so rich, all these minerals. <laughs> and it's true. We are a very rich country. Uh, they call us a country because Africa. <laughs> I wonder why. Oh. And I think there is a point because if you look at it in terms of what is what exactly is Kenya? What, what exactly is Namibia? Is it the boundary? But back to the what 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 now Richie was leading to in terms of what we call the balance of payment. Balance of payment is kind of also what determines the health of the economic health of a country. Like he says, there is now a global international trade system, a platform is mostly purely capitalism. Yeah. You know? And so we have the raw materials like tea and we believe that we are doing something for us. We're producing something. But when we export them, we have to do so much volumes in metric tons. By the time to even buy, let's say, uh, 
a tanker a military tanker and there was a time that Africa was so obsessed with old relics that were used in 1944 or, or there was the second world war these are things that we were buying when we were buying them at a very high price compared to what we are what we what what, what we are selling them or what they're buying from us so this creates two to three scenarios one how many how many sacks of of of, of, <laughs> of, of tea <laughs> you need to get yeah. one car it, remi- it reminds me of back then when we were yeah. in high school yeah what? how many sacks of yes a whole lot you back then when we were high school remember how people used to say you can you can pay your school fees with gorogoro of maize how many do you have to for you to afford that school fees if you don't control the school yes. fees yes mm. you know your farm your farm is finite mm it can be subsistence size. yes yes <laughs> there's there's a cap to the number of maize bags you can produce you can get from that farm so this person like is you. so this person is telling you yes you can bring your gorogoros but i dictate how much fee is yes mm-hmm. so they can tell you that fee is 300,000 per Uh, pa, 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 pa year. Mm. So bring your gorogoros let us let's count see, let's but see. I'm going to buy your gorogoro at this for price. 10 shillings yes. exactly and yeah, that's what has been happening to us yeah. uh initially we didn't control and we still don't control mm. much of that export market which is the, the tea uh the coffee the sunflowers mm. of the time a lot of the flowers even the flowers cultural yes actually in Kenya the almost the entire horticultural industry we control very little of it we we are just laborers mm. we are the, they we're, provide we're the arena. employment yes to us <laughs> but are we really producing so when you say that kenya is producing horticulture who are we producing it for, for? remember the, remember the who is producing it who is, who is producing it here yes. actually the company. who is that person yes producing it for It's like Zimbabwe so have, it's like Zimbabwe and gold exactly mm-hmm. just or so, South Africa and gold yes so you have the tea farms here owned by companies that are listed at the London mm, Stock Exchange yeah. they are not even listed <laughs> here in, in NSC yeah they don't give and, a hoot about yeah, it and so the, it's it's this we are talking about 50,000 100,000 acres of plantations mm. they are huge they are huge when you start thinking about the acreage itself mm you realize they're huge now they export the entire production Volume. top tier it's not like the, the things we get here you know i, I remember something Uduku. you always complain about your tea <laughs> yeah my tea i have to get my tea yes Ketepa. all right go ahead because this other one is shit <laughs> <laughs> so oduku there is there is a there is something called uh, my uncle mr lawrence who used to work at kenya canas mm. in thika yes and every december he would come home with beautiful bottles of of uh, of what is what is this 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 fruit called what pineapple pineapple you know the round one yes, mm. that had a hole in it yes no yeah. it was called tito it was it was not in any shop in kenya mm. so there is one day i asked him why do you get this stuff why why is it that i've never seen this thing <laughs> in shops in shops <laughs> yeah and he told me that this one we make them at 3 a.m. they are in lorries in mpangana hivi that going to the airport nothing is sold locally exactly. then <laughs> i think i think last year they started selling them mm. <laughs> yeah, because probably they have introduced newer, a, better a newer better to the items for that other market yes oh. and it's already running you get so the thing is uh, now where we fail is that the resource you use to produce this is in your country the land is in your country the rain the is labor. in your country but then everything that is being produced in that piece of farm is exported and so the only way you gain is by them paying your citizens peanuts in, in, in terms of salaries mm. right and so we don't control the entire value chain of most things we consider our exports mm. So when you go to let's say you go to Kenya and, and you want to look at the balance of trade on Kenya and you want to look at where how, what did Kenya gain from selling what out there if you look at that entire list and then you look at who is producing those things that we are exporting and then you start to realize that the entire cash crop as an industry is just a big scam mm. Mm. that does not in any way 
help to develop a country. Mm. And now this is something that now, and now going back to the BRICS, linking it to BRICS, this is now something that the Asian countries realized. Earlier than us. You know, Britain, British was in Hong Kong until 97. Mm -hmm. They they colonized China. (laughs) I don't know, the British were just... They colonized India, colonized, remained with Hong Kong until 97 when we are already... Yeah, adults. We are already big. We're talking about Mm. millennium development goals. Yeah, so when we want to talk about BRICS, I think the first thing we should talk about is China. Mm. Because China uh, is the agent that is driving Mm. this change and they are the agent that... In most is need. seeking yes. to be at competitive par with the United States. And so we have to look at uh, what are those economic aspects that makes this necessary for mm. China before we include ourselves in the conversation. Mm. And so if you look at uh, those trade statistics, you'll realize, for example, China has a... Uh, China, the trade that it does with the country is around $6 trillion. Kenya Shilly, uh, six trillion dollars. <coughs> now, out of these six trillion dollars, around eight hundred, nine hundred, they trade with Asian, the Asian nations, mm-hmm. and then uh, these are like ten countries in Asian, and then you have EU is number two, is the biggest, uh, the second trading partner, and then US comes at number three. Now, when you look at that structure, now these three groups from ASEAN and then the EU and the United States, these guys constitute more than around 50%, 50 to 60% of Chinese trade mm-hmm. with the world. So, it so means that, is, that is the EU, Asia, and America. Yeah. The, three, the, the, the top states, three. The Asian Asia states is like different. Asian states. The Asian states is like it's the, the other EU, 10 yeah, countries. Yeah. Yeah. There are 10 countries in that organization. So what is happening here is that the United States is the single most dominant trade partner for China. Yes, then as, a China, can, as a country. As a country. And it is not a unity, China yes, yes. China is also the biggest trade partner for the United States. Now, it's not by accident that that happened, mm. right? It's not by accident that that happened. When China was coming up and developing, uh, you had American companies flocking to set up shop and factories in China so that they could exploit cheap labor. The sweatshops. Yeah. Mm. In China, whether it's it's Nike, whether it's Adidas, whether it's mm-hmm. Apple, whether it's you had all these people flocking to China to exploit that huge population, basically sweatshops, so that they can make products at the cheapest of prices. And then now this is exported to the world. The best is exported to EU mm. and America. Mm. The worst quality is exported to us. Mm. To Africa. Yeah, mm. to Africa. Yeah, the other parts of the <laughs> world. Of the world. <laughs> there are others. Yeah. <laughs> Mongolia. Exactly. <laughs> so what that shows you, so the Asian states are neighbors. Yes. These are neighboring Limited states neighbors, to China. Yeah. Mm. So they are natural trade partners because you share a border or maybe just the next other country. So these are natural trade partners. The EU is like the EU and America. These are industrialized rich states. These guys have the money to buy the most expensive and the highest quality Mm. of products. So China grew, the industrialization of China grew to satisfy the consumer demands of the West. And so because... Of the West majorly. Exactly, of the EU... Because and, and, and America. America, and so this was the basis of Chinese growth for a long time until now the Chinese also became rich. Because when you are when you are selling, you make money, mm. and when you make money, you build you your build. country, mm. and when you build your country, your population's income starts to increase. Would you say that it is the sweat the sweatshops that uh, that give them the capital? Exactly, and then with the how you use construction. <laughs> mm. to to boost economic growth. So when that that happened, uh you had uh you had now the incomes of the Chinese increasing 
because they are making money there are companies everywhere mm. that are manufacturing things for the global market and mm. so they are making money and so on the side just the same way you see in silicon valley if you have a f- company here that is manufacturing iPhones the people who are working in these companies and the managers will form another company on the side and manufacture the same thing under a different brand and yeah. so that is across the 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 industrial sort of uh model, model. for china mm. and now when the the incomes were rising now you start having labor shortages people no longer want to take the cheapest the cheapest of jobs mm. they negotiating for better yeah, so now they are pay. negotiating for better income but now when they negotiate for better income the goods that are going to go to america the prices have to increase because the cost of production is increasing mm. and so to the entire world so you have to have cheaper chinese alternatives to sell to the rest of the world mm. right and so it's it's we are almost china is almost reaching a, a level where the, the 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 companies of the world we love to look for another region with cheaper labor mm. but now china has to think ahead what if either the american consumers uh, stop preferring products from chinese manufacturers to products from elsewhere or what if these companies ship out to go to other cheaper places like bops are going to like philippines mm. now there's a lot of Bangladesh going back and... going to india mm. so they, they they are forced to have that conversation so and now that's where america now struck with donald trump when now the copyright issues are coming up mm, like no you guys our companies are yeah. there you are stealing our <laughs> yeah. proprietary rights mm. to these products and you're making knockoffs and so we have to ban Huawei from coming here we have to ban everybody you have to ban everybody from coming here and now it becomes now a geopolitical situation mm. but the trade continues that's the point mm. Mm. the trade continues even up to now America is still uh, the, the top biggest trading partner, trading partner mm. for but then America has EU what does China has if the American market fails like how American politics now like bring jobs back home mm. what it means go bring those American companies in China so that they can manufacture in America mm. but when you do that you slow down the technological development of China mm, significantly yeah, creating an another vacuum yeah. country because then if these are the because Americans are really strict when it comes to copyright uh, intellectual rights now when China started hearing that rhetoric of bring Copyrighting. jobs back home mm. they are facing the threat of either losing some key manufacturers in their ecosystem also the threat of losing america as a market mm. so what do they do you fall back to your ideological stance now even though you've been practicing capitalism all along mm. you're like no no we have ours <laughs> we have ours <laughs> yeah, we have <laughs> ours yeah. and now it helped that because incomes of chinese were increasing so they are able now to buy expensive mm products. Yeah, I see them with a lot of yeah. iPhones these days. So America so, so the Chinese population has grown to a level where they can also now afford expensive so maturing consumer market. Mm. And so it will reach a point where China no longer have to depend on America for a rich market. Because they have their one status system. Yeah, there. they have their own market. And now corona happens. And destabilizes the world mm. and then ukraine happens mm. and then everything is reset you go mm. back to your ideological stances so you have ukraine you have russia struggling there wanting to assert itself but then nato and the us decided like we are mm. not going to allow yeah. this <laughs> yeah we are going to we are going to push and so russia knows there's the extent to which it can expand itself mm. beyond what it has already done so it is just it's just a small war of attrition at the border mm. and then nothing else because you need money to produce and so when you've been locked out of the financial system then where are you going to sell your oil 
and so you have your biggest neighbor is china so that's the first market mm. but then chinese the chinese have always been you know you know there are those people who are extremely self interested mm. they are like you have a problem well yeah. we can help you but only if we gain as well so we can buy and you can buy in rubles or whatever and then we can pay you in renminbi or whatever mm. so long as we get the oil which is okay and when you look at what china imports china imports half of it is like petroleum and then the rest is, is rare earth uh, minerals, minerals and all yeah. that basically china imports inputs for mm. production mm. and then export you can't you can't bypass that exactly and then they export finished products to the world but now you have russia which was supposed to be an industrial country but which still overly depends on exporting mineral resources to the world mm. to make money right now russia now was like a natural ally politically and militarily to keep the us at mm. bay mm. so like if china can say if we unite with, with with russia and you can't fight us it's not going to be easy mm. we are friends yeah then now uh, brazil brazil is the biggest economy that mm. side of the equation mm. and so they've also been moving towards this side of the left side of the equation and so they are like who do we know as a friend on the other side then you have a brazil mm. and then india is a natural competitor of china because first of all their their population is almost one. the same mm-hmm. one is 1.3 billion the other is 1.4 billion there are very many guys mm-hmm. there <laughs> mm-hmm. so so they have an economy and india it's also the economy is rapidly growing so they're also going through the same challenges that china is going through in rebalancing the economy so that you don't over depend on external consumers for the products you consume the other thing is that if china do not cooperate with india then india becomes a threat to, to china in the long term because mm. both of them are nuclear superpowers mm. so we have to be friends but then india maintains a, a half half double sided yeah. um, india is like i'll put I one find, one i find them in. the most lukewarm in the relationship yeah, it's, so, it's just like china is exactly. it's just it's that just like, it's more prominent exactly yeah. so they put one foot in and then like but even though we are in bricks it doesn't mean that we can't trade with everybody else mm. because you china open my that head guy is your <laughs> biggest trading partner in yes. eu yes, is also yes. your biggest trade not russia yes so you cannot tell us that we can't trade with those guys and the brazil but is it is it really about trade a, a no no it's always about trade. it's always about trade trade is not just about is just a means trade. for economic yeah, interest yeah. it's always about trade yeah, yeah. so and then brazil on the other side also a big trade big big trade agreements with the us so when you listen to uh the summit we had in in uh, in south africa mm. china was like let's not turn this into an ideological Mm. rival so that's mm. like a soft way of telling russia to yeah, to lia yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's not just about war yeah, kuna zingine yeah, they are making money yes, yes. yeah yeah mm. it's about and, the chums yeah mm. and then brazil was very explicit that this is not about ideology mm. this is about business and so if you look at populations if you look at the asian countries are like 650 million people that china is selling to mm. if you look at eu you have around 200 240 million people there that you are selling to then you have around 340 million in the us so that's like a billion mark mm. solid one yes mm. and then they look at africa they're like shit there's a billion guys there mm. yes we've been selling to them mm. but there's a billion let's exploit this dissatisfaction with the Bretton Woods institution that have been giving them loans and dictating how their politics should be let's, let's exploit this let's give them money with no strings attached who, even if they who, who has china been, china has been has been giving us a lot of yeah money. so we'll yes. give them money they, they we don't care as long as they pay whether mm. they are going to tax them is, is that how it is yeah, yeah whether they are going to tax their people to death we don't care we'll give you money 
Just make sure you pay or we take your port. Mm. Or your air. Or your, or your roads. Very simple. But then now we have greedy leaders. We went for it like give mm. us, give us, mm. give to us. Pay. Because you we were dissatisfied. To pay, to pay. <laughs> then a year later like repayment starts. Like yes, the, the loans have matured. Yeah, the, so we have to pay these things after all. Mm. Can yes. I can I ask you guys a question Uduku? Uduku, what is our what is our debt like to Ke- uh, our Kenyan debt to China? Is it are we paying it back? Yeah, from your taxes. <laughs> yeah, it's the reason for the increase of prices of everything. Yeah. And all these things you are being the added. Financial restructuring. In, 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 in taxes, in salaries of people. Mm. It's mostly because we are at a point where we are almost more than half of what we collect in a year. Mm. We used to pay debt. Mm. And it's mostly going to... Rec- I wanted to introduce Then, yeah. uh, two things so that we can tie them together. Mm. There was a dissatisfaction with the uh, international financial s- uh, infrastructure. Yes, yes, yes. And we understand that ideally World Bank and IMF is just an offshoot of America. That's just the the plain bit of red pill. Yeah. How uh, so? Yeah. How, How so? so it's because one they engineered it and they have been financing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. their money. It's their money. <laughs> <laughs> Simply, it's their money. So, it was interesting that the first the first beneficiary <laughs> of <China>. of co- <laughs> of uh, mm. of uh, contingent the contingent fund Funds. within BRICS went to two countries. Can you guess which one? <laughs> India and China. <laughs> and this is 2017, yes? Yeah. yeah. This when is 2017. Just the other day. Yeah, when just they formed the, the, the... It used to be called the BRICS International Bank. Now yes. they have renamed it the New, new, development, the new Bank. development Bank. Yes. <laughs> and, so the, and they what, put a hundred billion there. Yeah. Now a lot of that a hundred billion was from India and China. Mm. Because Russia don't have cash. Mm, they don't have cash. Brazil had a lot so of much. political problems uh, to deal with. <laughs> they don't have cash to put there. So we are making another another, another Yeah, you are making end. another Britain Woods. That is what I was telling you when we were starting up. That we were reacting to something. And in fact, we were creating almost a Uh, a, a, a pro- is it a protege or something? A, proto- the Breton, yeah, yeah, a prototype we, of the, the yes, Breton Woods. Yes, we are Woods. duplicating what... Yes, what and there's this, this contingency fund was meant because, okay, for a long time, we've always only had World Bank and IMF, and maybe if you have grants and yeah. aid elsewhere. But for a long time, we only had these two institutions. And there was a lot of, a lot of conditionalities on them attached. So if you have to get a loan, they have to tell you how to do it. And in fact... The other thing that we needed to talk about they is send how send you people to do it. To do it. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? They send yes. expatriates. Expatriates. How do you think the expatriate system or the culture yeah. came up? We'll send you experts to help you write the constitution. You pay them. Yes. Then you write pay a them from this money. Mm-hmm. And and they are the, they are the ones that that live in a two million uh, house in in Rwanda. Yeah, exactly. And then yeah. China saw the same thing. Like okay, yeah. so you want to build a railway? Uh, we'll, we'll give you the money, money, but we'll come, we'll send our engineers. Yes. And then the other thing now so we have our to talk bank, about. which has given you the loan, is not going to deposit the money in your account. It's going to be there. Going to New development bank. The, 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 the engineers <laughs> and, the, and the construction company is doing the work. Well, well, because the work has been done, you just pay us. Mm. Oh, wow. Really interesting. That's eh? a nice way you're <laughs> fucking people <laughs> are. Yeah, and, and, then, and then you were like, no, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, la, la, la. No, that's, no, no, that's okay. That's, that's the other thing. 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 We like that. Yeah. Right? And then China knows that we are greedy. Our yes. politicians are greedy. Yes. So like, but can we add something there for the president? Mm. Like, absolutely. Good. Absolutely. absolutely. I love that. Absolutely. We'd I'd be obliged. love that. We'd love that. I'd be obliged, your 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 your, your yeah. excellency. And then, and then they put the put yeah, the phone down. Yeah, it's added there for the president to have a a billion there for his own. And then they sign. The president signs very fast. Mm. Mm. And then you build your railway. And then no, you don't have trains. We we'll mm. bring, bring the you. Train. <laughs> <laughs> But then you don't have drivers. Yeah. You don't have these train drivers. Yeah. Mm. We'll and then train almost, your drivers, o- but first engineers, yeah. we will bring drivers yeah. to, 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 to drive the train. <laughs> but then you don't know how to manage the railway. Yeah. Yeah. It's so a give us a team. Let's manage it for you for 40 years. Yes. And then oh the train God. is not making a profit. You have Do to you subsidize. Have if you don't make a profit, you have to subsidize. 
because it's your train it's your railway it's your people mm. they are just managing mm. and the cost of doing business it's because of your own laws mm. so so, it, so if the operations can pay it then you have to subsidize of course, of course. we pay why are you going to pay we the money get the railway it was levy. which railway are we building that we we have to pay railway levy from every fuel we buy mm. from every electricity we buy. Railway levy. You do not yes. know that. You pay. <laughs> <laughs> now that money. That's like the road is levy. For, yeah, now that money is for adding them if they don't make a profit. Mm. Wow. It's like a plan B. Now for us, our job is to launch it and cut ribbons. Yeah, and cut ribbons. And then we go back home. And then our people can celebrate having a good really. railway, even yeah. if they Which is a meter are gauge. Old, they are the worst designs yes no if you want new ones we will <laughs> sell them to you but you have to clear this loan first mm. but if you have to give you another loan to buy new trains then we are the ones who are going anyway to anyway, anyway anyway you are going with that trajectory of of explaining of, of talking about the brick bank what do you mm. call it now the, the new one new, new the development new development bank, bank. yeah so, so so because they were offering a, an alternative one thing that china is selling is that we are giving you an alternative voice but is it really i think where we are standing with bricks globally most experts are now asking is it really an alternative mm. What are they offering? Because maybe it's an alternative because when you go to that Brics Bank, mm. they don't come with a lot of condition conditions and what they have we been talking they about two minutes ago. But you will pay. But you will pay. You will pay because these are the conditions. I d- I d- I we'll d- give you the loan. Yes. You know, it's just conditions with another name. Mm. We'll give you the loan, but we'll send our construction companies mm. to build the road. Mm. So even the money from this new bank is also just is working the same way. Absolutely. The financial system is the financial system. It does not change. It has the same the DNA. <laughs> it yeah. does, you don't finance alter it. has always been finance. Yes. It has the same DNA. Too. But you see now Uduku. So the problem is this mm. where the alternative is it an alternative? Mm. And now the the problem is that the the instrument uh which and you have to realize that bricks didn't come from a position of we just want to do good mm. from those people uh, there's something that we didn't talk about but when the G7 was formed ah, yeah. when G7 was formed it's like the seven most industrialized countries in the world in which China and Russia are members remember, yeah. yeah so the idea was that we keep on sharing what makes us great generally mm. it's like you have a the class club membership and yeah. you have bright students yes. and you put these bright students together so like prof- it's like some preps in the evening exam, yeah. <laughs> yes yeah. you know so that was the g7 mm. but then like no but we need to add more countries and so we had g20 but now what the g7 was accessing was different from what the g20 is supposed to access the cake yes. yeah it's the same thing with that we have with the un security council, council. you have veto members mm. The US, the China, the yeah. these guys are permanent. There. <laughs> and then you have one, some three representatives from Europe. Mm. In Africa, there's no representative. Mm. In the UN, you know, UN security. So your decisions can always be made by those veto powers. And then one, if somebody vetoes, nothing is done. Mm. So if America vetoes, the Chinese and Russia can go froth with their mouths. But there's nothing they yeah, can but do. But then if China also vetoes, That's China it. doesn't usually veto, it abstains. Mm, it abstains. <laughs> because it's, it wants to play both sides yeah. of the equation. Mm. So it abstains. Russia usually doesn't go. So there's a huge power play being played at the highest possible Apex level, level yeah. by the top industrialized nations, which are basically looking for markets. For their financial products, they have surplus cash. Mm. They want to loan out at interest. And then they have products from their industrialized bases that they want to sell to the world. And so when this G20 could not get what the G7 was getting, there was dissatisfaction there. Mm. And then China and Russia used the pretense like, no, we need to give these guys that. But th- it was a pretense of like, no, we need to get out of this mm, place. Just the guests get out of here. try to form our own no thing one, yeah. on the other side. And mm. then the BRICS was formed. Then comes in through South Africa. 
And then now you have Africans. So it comes in, but without the cultural framework, without the political framework, without the governance framework. Mm. So la- let's just talk. Mm. We're going with the flow. Yeah, let's just talk and see. So it's not like a formal institution. Do you Would you feel like it is an invite to come as clients to our bank? Ultimately, that's, that's an ultimate uh, yeah, Ultimately, idea. it will be as a market for our products and as clients for our financial services. You know mm. how we used to run to Exim Bank when Uru came mm. Yes. Every weekend Uru was always in, in, mm. in China. With the, with the bowl. With, <laughs> for Exim Bank to give us. But Exim Bank is, is owned by the Chinese mm. government. Mm. And so they loan us through that bank but then it's like, ah, we have mm. not own loan. Mm. It's the bank. The bank. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the bank. The face value. Yeah, we should look at a way to reform the bank mm. so that it treats you guys more humanely. But before we do that, just, 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 just abide by what you Just clear, uh, clear the other yeah, one. Yeah, just, just abide with what It's not going to be hard. You said mm. you are going to pay anyway. Mm. So just pay. Now, the new development bank is there. They capitalize with 100 billion shillings. Mm, it's 100 billion there to the bank and then started lending out. Of course, it's it's their money, so you start lending yourself and you get from this pocket to this pocket. Mm. So China gets a little bit of it. Oh, so they lend they lend to China. Yeah, they they give they give some money to China. They're they the first beneficiaries. Yeah. Well, of course, you are the first. Yeah. It's like when you make your money. <laughs> yeah, well, you are the one <laughs> who has to like really it first yeah. before <laughs> anybody else. Like, <laughs> a bank and then, really I, 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 I create a bank and then loan my wife. Exactly, just like... <laughs> Like, mm. yeah, really, mm. Paul, you've worked your ass off, you've made this money, you have surplus <laughs> cash to capitalize a bank. Mm. Then, then later on, they, they run the test of, of uh, opening that. Now, the yeah, the bank now comes with its own conditions because yes. it is an independent financial or so, institution. Or so, yes. or so, or so, or so. So, if you go there, you're not coming to, to China, us? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you've gone to ask the they bank. They have got their own frameworks, mm. they yeah. have got their own rules, exactly. We don't so, interfere, mm, we don't want to interfere, but no. they're the ones who have made because the rules. Because the idea was that U.S. Is interfering with IMF and World mm. Bank. And so, as mm. we don't want to interfere. We don't want that same model. We don't want that same model. But you still will be given a contract, and a contract is a list of conditions to mm. abide by. Closes. <laughs> and those conditions do for you, a loan... Do you, do, you think, do you think they're going to come up with, with mirroring conditions that the IMF and the World Bank... It is already doing it. In they might way. not be too different. Uh, the only thing that you, the reason why Africans, especially now, are so upbeat about BRICS is because uh, we don't want the US or, or Europe or UK or whatever to tell us how we should manage our politics. We don't want to tell us to stop being corrupt. Mm. They don't want to, uh, to tell <laughs> us to stop violating human rights. Performance contracts. Yeah, we don't want them to tell us to, to bring LGBTI <laughs> here. You know, all these things that, that, that Africans complain about when they talk about colonialism, mm. so the anti-colonial rhetoric. Mm. But, so China comes, so like, we don't care. Mm. You don't care. Mm. If you guys want to kill yourself, it's a civil war. We are selling guns. Mm. <laughs> Do you have money? <laughs> That's what Russia Russia, the Russia, the Russia, the, the Russia like, foothold so in, like, in Africa. The Wagner like group. This, yeah, it, and it links to the Wagner issue. So you guys in uh, Central African Republic or in the Sahel region, mm. you guys are unstable. You don't have good militaries. You can't protect your president. So Wagner is sent to CAR to be there. The, 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 the military mm. protecting the president. Now imagine <laughs> the military of another country being your VIP protection oh. officers. That that happens? It, it is happening. It is happening. So so Africans love that. Africans love that we don't want to... You, to, you don't tell us we don't have tell stolen. Don't tell us shit, yeah. Don't tell us we have stolen. It's our money. We don't pay- tell us we are killing our people. Just give us the money, and then we will pay you. Mm. Yeah, mm. And, was, and then China was like, okay. "Cool, works okay. out for us." This is the money. We won't interfere with your politics, and 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 they have China has always maintained complete mm. impartiality. Impartiality. They don't interfere. 
you kill yourself, you are killing your people for selection violence. No statement, no diplomatic no, statement. That's, that's have your you ever seen them? Never. Never. And they've always maintained it throughout. Even when Russia was fighting mm-hmm. with Ukraine, mm. they were like, okay, this is the seven points here for a solution that you can use. But that's your only issue. Mm. You sort it out. You sort it out. <laughs> what we want is so that we don't meddle into that business. If you want something to buy from us, we are selling. Mm. But we are not going to come to your country and dictate how you should manage your politics. Now for us, what we forget is that uh, we didn't design this system. And so those people are just telling us how to run it. Mm-hmm. It's not ours, but then we are like, you can't tell us how to run it, it's ours. But then it's not ours. Ultimately, mm-hmm. it's, it's theirs. It you is theirs. They are like, no, we created you can't, this You thing. can't tell me how to ride my yeah, bike, so but when, they made the bike. Yeah, yeah, so when they tell us that you have to establish checks and balances for accountability and transparency. What exactly is that? That mechanism itself. Yeah, so like, then how do we do it? Okay, we'll give you a loan, apply to the World Bank. They can give you some money, send some expatriates there, teach you how to do it. And then you know how to do it. But the Africans like, no way. Mm. <laughs> you just need the money. <laughs> <laughs> Minus the conditions. Yes. <sighs> and so that's the cycle we have been, especially since Africans decided to elect the worst of their kind mm. in leadership, mm. which is also a strategy by the West mm. to keep the country as weak as possible for exploitation. But mm. we don't know that. Mm. And so... It goes, and then we blame. We, of course, we blame the, and then we think like maybe we, we need dictators. Mm. Yes, maybe we need dictators. And then once but you then say that, it's already available. Yeah, they are like them, but we do really need <laughs> yeah. dictatorship. Yeah. <laughs> but the problem is that we are given. It's like a dichotomy. Mm. We are being told that there are only two Either choices. Or, yes. There's democracy, and then there's dictatorship. That's mm. what America sells. But then guys are like, but uh, is that Chinese one dictatorship? Mm. Since that they have, they have, they are their country that have managed to bring the most like over 400, 500 million people out of poverty in less than 30 years, mm. is Chinese model of a better gain uh, mm. democratically? Mm. Is it is it better mm. than what the West is giving us? And so as we criticize the system we have, we keep on with our elections because it's so ingrained. And we have to do it. The, when we have to think of what the actual Chinese system means, mm. you'll realize it's more suited for that kind of a country because of the values mm. we were talking about. What are your values in that culture? So you are saying that uh, America comes with the IMF and the World Bank and tells you that this is us, this is a, these are the, this is what we would like you to do for you to access this money. It's a ten pointer of yes. what you need to do. Yes. The Chinese comes they with. They call the it the Basel framework. Basel framework. <laughs> <laughs> they call it the Basel framework. Yes. The Basel framework. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the one. <laughs> so, so, IMF. There's a Basel one. Mm, there's yes. a Basel two. Mm. Uh-huh. So these, these ones, like, you usually have just a little correction. Mm, just amended a little kidogo. Just amended a little <laughs> the, 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 edit. You know the, how yeah. you can look at what you've written. Mm. And then find Kakoma somewhere. Yeah, you know, it. Just edit kidogo, Tweak it a little bit. Yeah. You send. Mm. So that and Basel framework maintains that the liberal economy. It makes it easier for Western companies to come here, mm. get the bigger contracts for, let's say, resource exploitation, whether it's mining, whatever, and export so all that mm. to the West uh, while paying us a little money. Mm. Zamacho. Yeah, Zamacho. So whether it's titanium, whether it's too low oil, mm. whether it's what, we give them these huge contracts because it's part of the Basel framework, it's free market economy. Mm. So we give them what, this. What does free market economy? Uh, it means that anybody from any part of the world, especially their world, can okay. come in and ask for that job. Exactly. And you look at it this way: the first geological studies in Africa are done by British. Mm. So they you have an yourself don't even know where those where they always are. are. Yes. They only depend on the British reports. Yeah, reports. The a geological long time ago, yeah. 
Oh. Hmm. Like they didn't know there was so oil in the So they can decide <laughs> not to tell you where the minerals yeah. are. But they have it mapped. But they have the maps of the minerals. And this they did way back in the 1920s, 1930s, and 1940s. They mapped the mineral resources. How, how, how long does it take a country to map their own country? With the, with the engineering. For that, you that's, to goes map, the, that's goes to the, the culture that we is are, this, yeah? For you to map, you have to know what you are mapping. Mm. But now, do you know what uranium is? Anyway, for a long time, geology was, is not a highly valued you know, subject so for of us, study. Anything above the surface that we could find was okay. Mm. But for these guys, they already knew there's something beneath the surface. Mm. And so they built a framework for that economy in the future. And so they bring their prospecting firms here. We give them licenses. And those licenses are usually 20 years, 25 years mm. licenses. Very extensive. It's not a one year license. Mm. Like five, actually, there's and, five years, and once you're in it, years, yeah. 15 and 25 years, and even when that expires, it's and very difficult for you the to others for land to renegotiate which they put at 99 years, yes. So they can hold a huge piece of land that they know contains something, but they hold a lease for it for 99 years. That means no activity can go so on, so there's it. no activity that can't can, violate it. Can, can happen there. I want us to wrap up this. What I'm hearing mm. is that, is that. You know the excitement about bricks is is neither should for for us is neither here nor there because we are just dealing with the with with different faces. Would, would you say that that is the 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 that that's how you see it? I, I like that for I like that we are having a different voice that we are able to criticize what has existed for all these years. But before that, I needed to also make a, a commentary in terms of our leadership structure, or just let's say a leadership philosophy, because that is what might make the ultimate difference. Because you see, these guys are saying, now we don't really care about, about you fighting each other, killing each other, you just do whatever you want, you know? Us will give you the money, pay it, as, as we have agreed in the court, because ultimately, any loan has a certain template. It has to follow it. It can come from a different bank, it can come from a different place, from a different person, but a loan is kind of like a contractual agreement. You get into it. There is usually a condition, whether it is told or not, or expressed. So we have a play if we had a leadership structure, and this goes back to the to the soul of the nation. If we had that, then it means that we could utilize the resources that we are getting. Loans are not a bad thing. We've been selling this fear in this country for a long time. That, oh, loans, limbaya, empire. Loans are not a bad thing. Loans even countries like you, you, when we started, we were talking about how much, how much the U.S. owes China and vis-a-vis. It, it, it is the natural order of the market system. One, one side has to trade with another. There's always an interest somewhere. And national interest is what a country uses to, to communicate or to link or to just dip, 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 diplomatically tie with another country. So if your national interest is very weak, if your national interest is led by leaders who are very greedy, they, 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 are, they, are not, they are very complacent. They don't care. There's no, there's no future for the, for the country in their minds when they're writing or they're signing these checks. So it means that we cannot go anywhere with the, the loans that we are getting. That, will, that is actually what might make the difference. Because if, I don't imagine even South Africa, they're, they're, they're backing any match. But they're only excited that they are, they are, they've been brought into the club. <coughs> Ever seen these top tier clubs of the privileged? Uh, yes, they're privileged. <laughs> you, you, like you have a membership card, so you're excited about it. You're playing golf with the big dogs, but ultimately, when you go back home, where is that home? What is the reality in that home? So I think that's why we are criticizing that it is as, as much as it is, it is a, go, a good alternative voice, and there is of, of course poten- potentiality in it. There is so much that it can offer. That's true. There is so much uh, 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 advantages it could offer us vis-a-vis, or in comparison to the to the Bretton, Bretton Woods institution, traditional financial infrastructure. But we really have to be very deliberate and strategic. How we do that goes back to our system, and that needs. A, I don't know if it's a complete <laughs> and, overhaul. And and and, and, and that that yeah. is brings me to the question that I wanted to ask Kuduku. Yes, we have two people that have been shouting a lot. Number one is President Paul Kagame, has been shouting a lot uh, towards the West. Yes, yes. Don't teach us. Yes. Don't lecture us. Don't do this. 
And the other day we had a new president, uh, you know, Ruto. And Ruto has even be, has come out even uh, with a with a, with a, with a bolder voice, yeah. <laughs> you is know. It bold, really? <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's take it at face yeah, value. Let's take it at face value. Okay. But at face value, yes. It, the, 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 the loudness from Ruto is really high. Yes. Now, what I wanted to ask Uduku is, we know what Kagame has done, you know, over the years, at least for his country. You know, let's put aside mm. his, 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 the, the politics yes. <laughs> and just look at the, the, the financial and what he has done to the country. Yes. Do you, f- or oh, you are you are you are afraid? Let's, let's. Do you think that Ruto is walking the footsteps of Kagame? Ama 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 is just making noise for the sake of making noise. I, I think uh, I, I like Kagame's story to an extent. Yeah. Only that he's been able to pull a country out of almost going back to ruins mm. and made a country that is can now be respected in the Commonwealth of Nations. Mm. And I like that about him. But I also know we, we are talking about the idea of scale here. Mm. Yeah. Kagame is, uh, Rwanda is like Nairobi. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, so. Is it, like, is it like Hong Kong? Yeah, but Hong Kong is has more people, more people is more developed GDP. and all that. Yeah, so I know that we have these things we call countries, which of course is another is another conversation mm, altogether. But they're too small to make any sense in the bigger picture. And I can tell you an example is uh, and the Chinese uh, Jinping he said something that is extremely important and extremely true. He says that China is like an ocean. So it's not like a paddle. So there's, there's all going to be turbulence. There can be turbulence in the ocean. There can be waves in the ocean. But the ocean will always remain the ocean. And he's ex- that is true it because the Chinese yes. culture yes. is not a recent culture. Yeah, This is a culture that has maintained its identity for thousands of years. There are very place. There are very few cultures in the world, apart from China and India. And India. There are few other places in the world that can boast of a continuous history. That succession. Yeah, of succession for thousands of years. Mm. So the soul of the Chinese person is not under contest. Mm. It is expressed. It, it is, is known. Yeah, it is solid. It is solid. Their soul as a Chinese person and what it means for an individual, like who I want to become. So you have the Chinese, you have the Japanese, you have the Indian. Mm. (coughs) And a little bit of some of those uh, Southeast Asian Mm. nations. They have held on to their culture for a long period of time. So they have found a way in which they can take modernity, integrate integrate it it into their cultural system and make it work for them while maintaining that kind of fabric of harmony because we are talking of a population of 1.4 billion people and there's no rebel activity in that huge and even india the subcontinent the indian subcontinent it's very huge it's big the chinese population is is more than africa population by almost 200 million Mm. so they they know how to deal with a person an individual they know and then they instill it on people at a very young age. What does it mean to be a Chinese? And even if they go to other places, they maintain their mm. identity. Mm. Well, even now in Kenya, in, in Kilimanjaro <laughs> and all that, mm. they maintain their identity. So I'm always very suspicious of leaders who are too loud uh, <laughs> and they are talking <laughs> about the West. Because usually uh, leaders use this as a way of distracting uh, from the problems happening activities at home. in Africa. Yes. Uh, leaders that have everything perfectly working at home, you will never hear them talking about. We have Scandinavian countries. They don't talk. We, uh, do you know who is the president of of, 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 uh, of Netherlands? Iceland or something. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> or, or that one yeah. that is giving people digital uh, citizenship. Exactly, mm. because they found a way in which they can focus on the person and try to make the life of the person better. And so they look at basic things. Your education, for them, it's free up to university. Like Norway. Your health, yeah. 
mm. access to the best health in the world primary agriculture and production the care of your children when you give birth what 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 welfare services are there for families so so some of us i think in africa our biggest problem is that we have not we have not talked about who we want to become the sort of we are us. not honest about who we are and we are not honest about who we want to become and so because we don't talk about that we want to jump in trains simply because we are at the train stop mm we don't know where it's going we are not at the driver's seat we add very little to that bus or that train but because it's passing ah, let's join in let's get in and see where it's going to go mm. and if we can see the past 60 years of history uh, from the post independence period the 1960s to now I think it's enough lesson for us to know that that train it's not always to your benefit and France Fanon I think wonders mm. that the pursuit of that model might not be the best for you he was just telling us indirectly that you need to sit back know which values you want for yourselves for your communities and then go out there and look for the best things in the world and integrate them Uh, and, and and add on to them yes mm. ladies and gentlemen <laughs> <laughs> there's only a lady in the audience <laughs> <laughs> how do you say what do you say when you want to address to men gentlemen gentlemen and gentlemen i i i feel like i feel like we have just we are in in our in one conversation there are so many it's ideas just, just a tip yes there are so the many ideas that we can always talk about when you talk to me i told me that you wanted to to have a serious <laughs> yeah that's why we're telling you one hour is not is not enough and you see we have we have left so much so much that we can talk about landmarks, yeah. now the good thing is that dialogues jagero just started 3 months ago <laughs> <laughs> and i am i am hoping that i we can have this bold conversation more and more and you know there are what i've realized with the, our continent and our country is that there is so much that we don't understand and we 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 are not even closer to understanding them mm-hmm. so even though we hear you know mp's talking about them in parliament we hear the president talking about them we hear them on tv but we have never internalized them we have never known what it really means you know for example the stock exchange why is it there what does it do uh you know ruto is always talking about this and that we don't understand them and now we have bricks everybody's excited that <laughs> at long last at long last but we are not members yet yes. yeah yes. bricks yes. and bricks plus yes, yes. we're not africans, even close to the conversation it's like talking of like us africa it's not mm. all its countries mm. yeah we are still need we are still not yeah at the eating table okay thank you guys it was beautiful you know doro duku arisacha the founder of cc magazine Uh, social commentator and uh, do we do a, a university lecturer right mm-hmm. yeah omundi choka it's always been good having you gentlemen i had a, a i had a I had a conversation with mutemu wakiyama which i thought was very insightful and now listening to you and listening to listening to to choka and listening to duor uh, just makes me think that there are so many conversations that we need to have and we mm-hmm. shall have them yeah we should not just about uh, sex but a lot about other things let's talk about sex important. baby <laughs> y- 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 not just about sex yeah. yes yes you know but a lot of other things mm-hmm. so uh, people of the internet thank you very much this was uh, oduku this was ochuka at dialogues with jagero i would ask you that you may leave a comment if you want to talk and have a conversation in this podcast you can always reach out to me but above all you could also decide that i want to follow this channel subscribe uh hit on that notification bell so that when there is another insightful conversation like this going on you can always join so thank you very much until another episode bye for now